Did you know a seller only has three options when pricing their home? Yeah, we're going to talk about what those are. And here's the thing. I made the mistake of choosing the wrong one as a listing agent many years ago. And since then, I have learned my lesson, which means all of my clients have learned that lesson too. So let's dive into it. You're watching and listening to GTR, Gary Talks Real Estate, stories told by a realtor investor. Yeah, as I said, I learned my lesson, which means all my clients thereafter have learned that same lesson. And going forward, you're going to learn this lesson today. And here's the thing. There's only three options, really, when you're listing your home. And here's those three options. You can be on the market in the market, or third, ahead of the market. And if you know where I'm going, you know where I want to be. And this, this is a story going back to about, I don't know, a number of years ago. And we had a client that was building some beautiful, beautiful homes. And we had to get, we put together our pricing strategy and working with the client. And, and here's, here's the information as it unfolded. We were kind of up against the gun a little bit, you might say, because the market has started to shift uh, from when they purchased the home. So already, already they were behind a little bit and you always make money on the buy, never on the sell. The buy is what you get to set yourself up for future future growth. And unfortunately, in this case, uh, we weren't able to do that. In fact, they bought these properties uh, without my guidance. They went and are, they already own these properties when they came and talked to me. So what did we have? We had a pricing strategy that I thought was fair and competitive, yet there were some circumstances along the way that meant they had to they had to sell at a specific price range in order for everyone to obviously be happy at the end of the day of this investment. So we were moving forward and we priced the homes and wouldn't you know it, we had an offer come in fairly quick. These were beautiful homes and the offer that came in, they were not overly impressed with. I thought it was a decent offer and here's where I made my mistake. I let the seller do the driving. Now the seller always does the driving, but sellers and buyers come to us as professionals, provide guidance. And there's in some cases as a listing agent and a buying agent, you've got to really submit your best case and your information. Sometimes you got to put your foot down uh, when it comes to pricing. And in this particular stance, uh, they chose not to accept that offer. And wouldn't you know it, many, many months later, they sold that particular home. In fact, both homes less than what we saw that offer at. So here's the lesson in a nutshell, and we'll get into a little bit of the nitty gritty here. The first offer you typically receive is going to be the best offer, right? Less days on market, uh, usually the most aggressive or the most favorable offer really to both sides. So, so I allowed the clients to do all the driving and I allowed the clients to be on the market. Now, there's a difference between on the market and in the market. On the market is, hey, let's see what we can get. We'll just price it, you know, pie in the sky really, really high and see if we can get the property sold. That is not a great strategy for anyone involved. The next is we have in the market, which means we're priced well enough to be in the market. But if there's two or three somewhat identical homes, how is yours going to stand out? So you're only priced in the market. What we want to be is priced ahead of the market. How are we standing head and shoulders above everybody else? Meaning, do we have a great product that people want? Is a great location? And is the pricing fair to everybody that comes through that front door? Because pricing is always the first, first filter. So what happened in the end? As I said, we priced that home uh, to be on the market not in the market and certainly not ahead of the market. And when we had that home listed, it was probably those homes were probably listed for approximately approximately a year, in fact. And we saw some offers come and go and people get interested and then you back off. Remember, the longer a home stays on the market, the less people get motivated, the mess, the less interest uh, people have in those properties. So we did get those properties sold and 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 not even close to what they had envisioned the the sellers. So there's where that's where it's really important to listen to uh, all the facts and and as a listing agent to provide the right 
path going forward. And in that case, I chose the wrong path. I should have stuck uh, with the plan, the tried and tested plan. And here's the thing, if you're an Asian out there, perhaps perhaps use this, and I, and I will definitely use this and have used this in the past and, and going forward. That's a great pricing strategy. That's a great price. However, I feel as a professional, uh, the price and from the market data, uh, we're here and your pricing seems to be so much higher than mine. Let's, we can do yours if you're adamant about it and you choose a time frame. Maybe it's two weeks that it's at that, that price if it's overinflated or incredibly uh, different than yours and you try it for a short period of time. If the home sells, excellent, high fives all around, yet we know every two weeks, and depending on your market, if it's a fast-moving market, either up or down, you need to be looking at that almost definitely weekly, and in some cases daily, depending on where your market is going. And as we see listing inventory start ever so slightly to build up uh, in the Toronto area, you definitely want to be on top of that. So don't be pricing yourself to be on the market and even don't be pricing yourself to be in the market price yourself to stay ahead of the market in out create some amazing opportunities for your sellers so you can get on with the next project that they are working on especially if they're investors and if they're uh, your typical uh, buy and move up and move down nobody wants to be on the market for such a long time use the pricing analogy uh, analysis use the market data come to come to an agreement on pricing together that you know is going to succeed. There you have it. You know, when you've been in the business as long as, as, long as I have, you definitely see uh, things come and go and you get to experience the good and the bad. In this case, uh, it worked out all well uh, for the sellers in the, in the long run, but not at that valuation that they needed. So stick to the plan, my friends. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye for now.